No, it's not beach yoga. Australians offer their best impressions of an ostrich to send a message to world leaders about climate change ahead of this weekend's G20 summit. Hiding in the shadows, the Philae lander is stuck behind a cliff blocking it from the sun, which could signal the end of the mission. And a vicious attack in Mississauga sends a woman in her 50s to hospital in life-threatening condition. Hi, and welcome to Humber News. I'm Earl Avalahun, coming to you from our newsroom here at Humber College North Campus. All eyes are on Australia as world leaders begin to pour into Brisbane for the G20 summit. The annual two-day meeting is meant to focus on strengthening the global economy, but security concerns are more moving center stage. Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in Brisbane earlier today. Tensions between Russia and Ukraine are rising following fresh reports of Russian troops invading eastern Ukraine. Western leaders are expected to address the issue at the two-day summit. Prime Minister Stephen Harper says he will continue to put pressure on Russia. As I said, five months or 50 years, we will never accept uh, the illegal occupation or annexation of any Ukrainian territory to Russia. Leaders from Germany, France, Britain and the U.S. will gather to discuss their concerns over Ukraine. Climate change is not on the agenda for the G20 summit, but some Australians are determined to shine the spotlight on it. More than 400 people buried their heads in the sand of Sydney Beach to protest against Australia's climate change policies. Protesters say the Prime Minister's failure to address climate change is all the more galling in the wake of an agreement between China and the U.S. Andrew, can you please... Uh, the G20 starts this weekend. We thought it was a pretty humorous and potentially powerful message to send to our government. Australia repealed attacks on greenhouse gas emissions in July, the only country to reverse action on climate change. The little spacecraft did the impossible when it landed on a comet, but the mission is getting into a very critical phase now as Philae's batteries are running out of power and communication has been lost. Officials say they managed to drill into the comet with the probe's remaining power before communication went down. Philae came to the rest in the shadow of a cliff that's blocking the sun. That's preventing it from recharging by using the onboard solar panels. The probe's exact position is not known because it was bounced from its original position before landing. Here at home, a Mississauga woman in her 50s in, in hospital in life-threatening condition after being stabbed repeatedly in her townhouse parking garage. Peel police say the stabbing happened at around 11 last night while the victim's family was at home. Her townhouse near Huron, Ontario and Rathburn is now carefully being watched by police. Police say they don't believe the woman was targeted or that it's a matter of domestic violence. Holidays quickly approaching, a Toronto shelter is opening its doors to homeless young people and providing them with a safe and festive place to stay. Ainsley Smith has the story. There currently is roughly 10,000 homeless teens living in Toronto. However, Youth Without Shelter provides a safe and welcoming environment, especially over the winter holidays. Sabrina Perry, employment facilitator, says the holidays are a very busy time at the youth shelter. Um, at YWS, we see about 50 youth at the holidays, so we're at full capacity. And then we also have a post-care program where we also serve about 50 youth um, in terms of hygiene packages, food. They come back to access the services here at the shelter. The shelter provides food, clothing, a place to sleep and other necessities for guests. I, th I think that we try and make it as comfortable as possible for the youth by providing a sense of security. Um, staff on board are, are really in tune with what's going on. I know a lot of the youth affected by homelessness don't know what it's like to have a holiday season or Christmas. One way the youth shelter celebrates Christmas is through their Home for the Holidays event. Margaret Bangia, the director of the youth shelter, says she hopes the event raises awareness throughout the community. I'm hoping that aside from the fact that the community will learn that youth homelessness is definitely a fact, um, that it exists. The event takes place next Wednesday and will provide breakfast, a variety of guest speakers and prizes for the guests. Bangia believes this is a great opportunity for the community to perhaps give back to the shelter. Take a breath, step aside for a moment and realize that perhaps, you know what, let's think of somebody else during the holidays. Youth Without Shelter allows Toronto teens to feel safe and welcome, especially over the winter holidays. And their upcoming event, A Home for the Holidays, will shine some light on the issues involved with youth homelessness. Ainsley Smith, Humber News. There's lots of magic and excitement in the air. Santa's little helpers are getting ready for the big parade this weekend.
This year, the Santa Claus Parade will be bigger than ever. It'll include 31 floats, more than last year, and 21 marching bands. This year's par parade will look at a bit different, too. There will be a lot of sports floats. The Raptors mascot, a giant sculpture of Leafs goaltender Jonathan Bernier, and a Toronto FC soccer player, the biggest figure ever built for the parade. The fun gets underway on Sunday, starting at 1230. It goes from Christy Pitts to the St. Lawrence Market. To Paris now, where the search for a tiger on the loose has been downgraded. Police and military personnel were frantically searching for what they thought was a tiger near Disneyland Paris. They now say it's likely nothing more than a large cat or lynx. A Paris circus is already home to four tigers, has offered to give it a home once it's captured. The world's tallest and shortest men are in London to celebrate Guinness World Records Day. Sultan Kosin is from Turkey and is two and a half meters tall. Chandri Dangi from Nepal is about half a meter tall. That's about a two meter difference. Kosin said he's happy to meet Dangi because despite of their height difference, they have experienced similar life struggles. An annual charity event kicked off today in Seoul. People are making tons of kimchi for a good cause. Thousands gathered at the City Hall Square for the event. The traditional side dish is made using a red paste with garlic, ginger, and a fish sauce. Volunteers got into the rhythm making 2,500 tons of the cabbage dish. The plan is to deliver it to the poor during the winter months. When we come back, we'll tell you what's happening in the world of sports, and Marielle Torfranca will have your three-day forecast. Earl, it's not too bad out today. We are getting some rays of sun here and there. And while the sunshine will last throughout most of the weekend, Sunday will throw us a little bit of a curveball. I'll tell you all about it after the break. We'll have your full sports and weather reports after the break. But first, in times of trouble, there's a new hero in town to call. Cop? Actually, it's the York Regional Police. Today, they're releasing their short film, United, which features a nameless superhero who fights off villains with the help of the community. The five-minute movie is part of a campaign to improve police reputation among kids. <laughs> 